Hey guys, today we're talking about tone production for beginners specifically, and all these things apply to intermediate players, even advanced professional players, but beginners usually have the most problem with what we call the screeches, and if you have started trying to play a string instrument, particularly the violin, um, you understand this is a very, very obnoxious, very obnoxious problem to have. Let me demonstrate the screeches for you. It's a very unpleasant sound. <laughs> screeching, scratching sound. There are several things that go into it. Well, there are a lot of things that go into it, but I'm just going to name a few. I'll probably not think of something, um, but these are the basics, and so hopefully if you understand what you're doing wrong, then with lots of practice and with a little bit of time, you will start getting a better sound. A lot of the problem can be caused by your left hand not putting down enough pressure on the string. And I said in last week's video that I don't really like the word pressure because it um, makes it sound as though there's a lot of tension involved and we don't want tension. At the same time though, especially as a beginner, your muscles aren't really developed yet and so you have to be patient with that. There are lots of finger building exercises that you can do. Um, but in the meantime, let gravity do its work. You know, if you can think of it as a sinking in motion where your hands are just okay, let it sink in then you'll probably get a better sound. But yes, if you're getting a screechy sound, it probably means that your left hand just isn't quite getting the string to go down far enough. Another contributing factor is when the bow hand and the left hand aren't together in their timing. So if you change your bow before you press down with your left hand or vice versa, then you're gonna get that weird screeching sound. Let me see if I can do it. Let me see. I've practiced it out of my system. Hold on. <laughs> uh, kind of? <laughs> Don't do that. Another problem is when you squeeze at the bow changes. So you get really tense and tight because you know that either your left hand is changing fingers or your, your bow is about to change direction. And for some reason, your body just tenses up. And so you can hear that in the sound. If you go down bow, Bow. If you hear that squeezing and that screeching, that's because whenever you're changing direction, your hand just gets so tight and tense and you slow the bow down. So you're actually stopping the bow a little bit before you change directions. And so what you want is just a smooth transition from down bow to up bow. arm, especially for beginners when they're not used to it, is to just go like this, right? You just want to play like this. But whenever I do that, look at what happens to the bow. It's crooked. We have to make up for that because the bow needs to be right here. This thing is really, really bothering me. Right. So to make up for this, place the bow and we extend outwards. And then whenever we come back in, leading with our wrist, we meet back here. And this saves us from getting this really washed out blech sound of, you know, this. I hate that sound. So, crooked bow, very, very bad. As much as you can, try to keep it um, as straight as possible. For the top two strings, extend outwards, kind of away from you this way so that the frog is like pointing over there. Um, for the bottom two strings, you kind of want to angle your bow backwards this way frog going that way and not drastically we don't want it to be you know too too much um, in either direction but we still want that um, that angle adjustment and another thing too is that whenever you play with a crooked bow this is really weird watch this if your bow is crooked it naturally draws your bow towards the bridge which is a very very dangerous place for beginners I and mean, listen to this it sounds terrible so the best place for a beginner to start is, you know, maybe like up here, something like some, somewhere around here. Um, and, you know, make sure the wood of the bow is kind of angled towards your face, not too much, but just enough. And just keep it in the same place, same contact point. This leads me 
to my last point of explaining why we get the screeches and how to better our tone. Um, there are three things that, well, there are more things, but there are three basic things about the bow that help us to be more musical, to get a good tone, get a good sound, really just um, breathe with the music, if that makes sense. Our bow is kind of like our breath, and we want to breathe with our bow, and there are three aspects that go into really good bow technique. In no particular order, the first one is the contact point, so where your bow is on the string. Maybe here, closer to the bridge, maybe up here on the fingerboard. Up here is piano. You know, down by the bridge is forte. Other than affecting dynamic, it can cause the screeches if you do not apply the right amount of pressure and use the right amount of speed. And this is something that is very good to experiment with. If you just take the time every single day to um, try the different contact points, but adjust either the speed or the bow pressure until you find exactly what you want, and then play, you know, once you get it really, really good, then keep playing it so that your body gets used to it and gets used to what it feels like whenever you have a good sound, um, then you, it's going to start showing up in your playing. You know, whenever you play, you're going to start finding, oh, I'm actually using the right combination of speed, pressure, and contact point. And so that's just something that you have to figure out and, um, you know, work with on your own. But hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of how it works. Um, speed, you know, we don't want to be flailing all over the place, but sometimes students will just go so slowly that it, you know, kind of crunches and stuff. And so we want enough movement, but we want the right amount of pressure. You know, whenever we get closer to the bridge, we need a little bit more pressure because if we're close to the bridge and we don't apply enough pressure, we get this. Ugh. Horrible sound. So those are things to experiment with and to practice on your own. Um, you have to be patient with it, and if you still get the screeches after a couple weeks, you know, keep on trying, keep on going. Like it, it takes a long time to get used to the instrument, get used to the mechanics of it and how it works. Which is why it's important to have a private teacher so that they can um, look and see what you're doing exactly and um, help you out and try to get that, uh, get that good feedback for you. So, um, but I hope this video helped you. Those are some of the basic causes of that terrible screeching noise. Um, my best advice is to be patient and not get frustrated. If you work with it long enough, you're probably going to figure it out. So, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video helps.